I'm Hannah and I'm Charlotte and welcome to the Purple Sector. So today we are joined by the lovely Kira and um, so would you like to give us a little bit of a description about your channel? Hi girls thank you for having me yeah my name is Kira Megan I am found on social media as Kira Megan F1 you can find me on YouTube Twitter and on Instagram I just do F1 content creating basically I do YouTube videos I do reporting on Instagram and on Twitter I just say everything that I've ever wanted to say <laughs> basically. Perfect um so yeah I will link all of Kira's description uh, links in the description below so should we get started everyone and um, we should start with um something from Quali because we had quite an interesting qualifying so Kira do you have anything you want to say about that yeah I mean Quali was it was different obviously we had the uh, I think the, probably the main point we got from it was the fact that Williams were really really quite competitive and qualifying yeah. Alfa Romeo is really far back Haas were really far back which we kind of expected but we also expected Williams yeah. to be back as well but Williams to get both cars in Q2 absolutely amazing yeah definitely I, I was actually out so i was only getting updates through like the whatsapp groups that the content yeah. group chat and hannah was like and my friend my friend yeah. callum was like both williams in q2 and i was like the one day mm, i go out and i miss everything i think definitely that was one of the biggest shocks especially because it had been such a shock last time out finally see george russell get into q2 and then latifi to do it as well I think this is, this is the first time since Italy 2018 that they've had both cars in Q2. So, yeah, and also, definitely. I think George done well to get, like, it's not, it wasn't like he was, like, P14 or whatever. Like, he was, like, was yeah. he, like, P11 or something ahead of Alex? So, yeah. that was really, yeah. really good. Yeah, like, they mm. clearly have improved on the Saturday because two weeks in a row, George, P12 or P11, and then to have Latifi, who has always been back of Q1. So, it is, mm. it is good to see that they are improving on their Saturday it's just the Sunday like I saw Latifi got a really good start on the Sunday it's just and then he ended up five laps behind it's just the car but yeah it's good to see them being like in the midfield I think one thing I've got is that the Ferraris looked a bit more racy than they did in previous races the fact that they qualified fifth and sixth was good what my big kind of shock was was that Max qualified P7 and I'm just thinking where was on that Saturday? Where was the pace on the Red Bull? Both drivers were complaining about difficulties with the car, and I just think that Red Bull looked so promising in pre season testing and then it seems to have faded away. So, yeah, to be <gasps> 13 in a Red Bull is kind of you know, especially when like they're, meant, like they're second in the championship now, so yeah. you would be thinking that they'd be qualifying P13 from P7, especially with the mm -hmm. McLarens in P8 and P9. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that was a bit of a shock, especially because their past qualifying has been so good. Like, uh, and especially around the Hungara ring as well. They're normally really competitive around there. They're yeah. always, you know, right up there with Mercedes. So it was, when you saw how far Max was back when he was P7, inevitably Alex is going to be that same distance, but further back, if that makes sense. So yeah. it was yeah. it was really bad to see. And actually hearing how upset Alex was, like he is a very level-headed guy you know he's not very he's not really angry you know he doesn't always show how upset he is but actually to hear his team radio actually he was quite upset him because he doesn't deserve that he's an amazing driver and clearly that car is not working for him as it basically doesn't for anyone other than Max Verstappen. You have to admit looking back on it he should have put better laps in however that car is just made for Max it's one of the reasons it's a psychological thing as well if you know you're all getting in the car, and to be honest, the team don't really want you to win. They want Max to win, and they throw you under the bus to get it. Then you're always going to struggle to perform your best. Yeah, and I think that's a, like it leads into the point that I was going to make about George, because obviously George and Alex have grown up together. They know the ins and outs of how they both drive. They know how yeah. good each other drive. And for George to then go and have the, I think it was interview with Sky, and say that Red Bull are just making an idiot out of him, like... But I know he is his friend and he will say that, but it's true. And then for Max to retaliate saying that George needs to focus on his own team. Max, you're only saying that because he was he was saying something bad about your team. Like it's your team. It's not yours and Alex's team. It's your team. But Alex yeah. was the big guns in karting. Like Alex was the big one. Obviously, he's a couple of years older than most of them. So he was the one they look up to. Like we know, Lando Norris has a poster of Alex Albon in his bedroom back at his parents' house. Like Alex was the guy. Like Alex was Lewis Hamilton, but in karting. Yeah. So I can see why they all look up to him and they all aspire to be him. Obviously, we are. I think most Formula One fans just look at the present day and they, they see how good they all are together. But actually, they've known each other for 
the whole lives and Alex was always the one that was ahead in casting he was always the one that was winning so yeah uh, it's really nice for George to come out and say that to be honest with you because I think somebody needed to say something and it's great that it came from a driver yeah I think it was an interesting one because it's not normally the drivers kind of pigeon toe around stuff like that like when they've had criticisms about other drivers they don't tend to address it outright because it's very much the PR model of a driver is not to publicly confront things and also the fact that George is a Mercedes Junior publicly basically criticising Red Bull is a little bit on the nose and I think it was nice to see that sometimes that very much the personality of the drivers that we saw during the Twitch streams that we've seen for a lot of them growing up is they weren't actually to sit their neck out and it was interesting the fact that George said that both Max and Charles had knew how talented Alex was and I think hopefully it'll give Alex a little bit of a confidence boost I understand why Max defended the team it is a bit on the nose the comment because very much I agree criticising the fact that Red Bull favour Max, but there's certain mechanics, there's a lot of personnel that go in there, and I can see Max's yeah. point is standing up for the team, but also I think Max should have just kept his mouth shut. I get that, but I don't think Alex was saying it about mechanics no. and personnel. He was saying it about Horner and he was saying it about Marco. So Yeah. But yeah, that yeah. kind of leads on to your race point that you want to talk about, Hannah. Yeah. So I think my, my thing from the race was the comparative analysis of how Max did compared to how Alex did. So I think Max took P2. We all know how hard Max goes out and races. Alex finishing fifth and thankfully not getting a penalty. There's been arguments in oh thingy that Alex should get cut from Red Bull, be replaced as said. But fine enough comparing how far say Pierre was last time compared to this time. I think Max is very much showing his dominance in the car. He's showing that no matter what car Red Bull give him even crashing into the wall on the frigging formation, on the uh, reconnaissance lap. And hats off to them Red Bull mechanics. I just don't understand how it happened, like, honestly. And the fact that they fixed that car with 20 seconds. Hmm. Crazy. Really good, though. Really good work from them. Like, he definitely, like, showed, like, in the race. Like, he is the the dominant Red Bull. He is. But he just showed his skill, like... When Valtteri pitted for the third time to try and make Max pit and he stayed out on them tyres and still drove amazingly and still had a gap. Like Valtteri came out, I think it was like nine seconds or something. And he still had that gap. Like, shows he is just, he don't get put under pressure. He's he's calm. So, Kira, do you want to talk about uh, your race point? Yeah, I would love to. And I'm so happy that I'm talking about this because... We haven't heard from him in a while, uh, and it's Kevin Magnussen. I'm really, really impressed with how he competed this weekend. It's so nice to see him back up there. Obviously, he hasn't been on the pace for the past year and a half, really. And it's such a shame because I, I'm a big Kevin Magnussen fan. There's no two ways about it. I think he's a good driver. Obviously, some things he does, people are like, what are you doing? But he's a proper racer, and he's got it in his heart. And it was just so lovely to see him get up there obviously he was on full wets at the start of race and I looked and I thought yeah. hang on a minute I don't what's, go, what's, what's going on then right it's definitely not because I was sitting there thinking we could be on slicks right now for the start of the race and then I saw Kevin on wets and I'm thinking right th- what are you doing um obviously they both came in both Roman and Kevin came in to change onto slicks and then inevitably the rest of the grid did it by like lap five everyone was in so they them two were up to like p2 p4 I think and they were running really high up there and I was sitting there thinking you know this isn't going to last very long. The car is not is not competitive at all. It's going to get overtaken and overtaken. And Roman did, to be honest. But Kevin held up for ages. I think throughout the middle of the race and to the last year, he was stick, stuck on P5 for ages. And I think Alex was behind him or someone, Sebastian or someone. And they weren't catching him. Yeah. And I was so impressed because that's what I want to see from Kevin Madison and Haas. And yeah, I, I was just so proud of him. Obviously, inevitably, he went down to P9 and then with the 10-second penalty, P10. But really good race. To keep that car in the points when Roman is back down like below P10 like it just shows that he he has what it takes and if has to get rid of him I think it'll be a big shame to be honest because he is if he was in any other team I think he'd be in the top 10 more frequently for sure definitely I think how we managed to drive that car was incredibly impressive considering that that has car is probably the third worst car on the grid in race pace the one thing though that I didn't know was the rules on the reconnaissance lap about pitting. Magnuson could have turned around and said, I'm coming into box on that lap. They could have agreed that he was going to come in at the end of the formation lap and they wouldn't have got penalised. But because they responded and told him to pit, 
they've been penalised. And I just think is that was probably the most inventive strategy any of them have ever had. And their kind of ingeniousness has been penalised. And I just think you want teams to think tactically and think smart. This is probably the smartest decision Hassel make all year. And you go and penalise it. I just think, what a waste. I just don't... This is the thing that I was watching... Um... Who, who started it? I think it was Chris Medland on Twitter, maybe? Yes, yeah, he started that yeah. thread and then Tommy, Tom from WTF1 and then Jack Aiken replied to explain yeah. it. And it's just like, if they had just said it in a different way, they would, they would still be P9 and wouldn't have 10 second penalty. And that just blows my mind. Like, yeah. if they said, yeah, like you said, Hannah, I'm coming in and they just didn't reply, they would have got, like, more points. And it, I just yeah. don't understand. Like, I it's never knew great. that was a thing. Because like, what driver is going to be like, I'm coming in, and they're not... They wouldn't then just come in when they hadn't had a response for the team, because you wouldn't do it, because then you'd be in the pit lane, and you wouldn't know whether your team are going to be ready with the tyres or not. And I think it's yeah. such a silly rule, but it's one of those ones that it's probably been around for ages, and until a situation comes up, it's then they've then realised we need to review it. And I don't think that's good enough for Formula 1. Is there anything else you guys think we need to discuss from the weekend? Yeah, I'm going to talk about Lance, because mm-hmm. I actually really like him. I liked him in the Williams, I like him in Racing Point. He's obviously got the, the stigma of my dad bought my seat. But this like this weekend has just shown that he is a good driver and he does deserve a seat in F1. Whether it's in Racing Point, whether it's in another team, like last year, like a couple of years, like he has not he has not performed it in a Saturday at all. And for him to be P three and then finish the race mm-hmm. in P four just shows he can hold his own in a race. And yeah. to be honest, I think he would have he would have had a shot at P3 if they had pitted him quicker after what Ass was pitted because I watched his interview with uh, Sky after and he said that they were holding out for the rain that never came and by the time they pitted him he was like when he got out he was already like 10 seconds behind what and there was no way they would catch but yeah I think he did really well, a really good job this weekend and hopefully it'll be nice to see him and Perez performing like that again in Silverstone in two weeks because I think they do have a point to prove they're not just they just don't want to be seen as the pink Mercedes they want to be seen as like good a good team good drivers so yeah I really like Lance I think he's probably one of the most underestimated drivers on the grid obviously there is that pay driver stereotype but a lot of drivers got into their careers like Nicky Lauda took a life insurance act to get into um, his race seat so his Saturday performance has been atrocious he's admitted that and it's something he's been working on. And to show that level of race pace and show that level of race craft, I'm hopeful of Lance. And I also think it will give him that level of confidence that he needs. When you've spent your pretty much your whole career in Formula 1 being told you don't deserve that to be there, he needs that confidence boost and also that level of cockiness to say, you know what, I deserve to be here. Elbows out and try and get past me. Obviously, we all know the speculations of what's going to happen with the other seat in Racing Point. And it's inevitable. You know, there is some talk, you know, is, is Lance going to lose his seat? We know Lance isn't going to lose his seat. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think he should lose his seat. But at the same time, I don't think Checo should lose his seat either. But it's really important that Lance has weekends like he did in Hungary to really show that he can beat Checo on pace. And, you know, he, he isn't the second driver in that team because if he was to just completely fall back and to completely be dominated by Sergio Perez, then when Sergio may or may not get replaced, then if he does get replaced, it's going to look so bad on Lance. So it is important that he really does put out the bags and really good races, as he did this weekend. And I think he was amazing this weekend. And I, I, I think he deserves his seat, 100%. Obviously, there's, there's loads of paid drivers in the field that you don't realise. And people just seem to be blindsided by that. But the only person they can look at is the fact that Lance is a paid driver. And it's silly. So I hope he proves his worth. And I hope he has more weekends like this. Well, I, don't, I really don't want Checo to lose his seat because he is a class driver like he's but like this season he's shown that he is a class driver but then also if Lance does fall back you've got to remember that his dad is a businessman and he won't keep putting money into something that doesn't get results so yeah. I know it's his son but he could say you need to step up or you're going to another team he could easily buy Lance a seat in a in a, yeah. a worse team if he's not performing then there is a chance that he could just be put into a worse team or at Formula One. With the new partnership with Aston Martin next year, I think he'll definitely want to keep uh, Lance there for that. I think he'd want to see, you know, how he does with that. But 
I, I don't know. I don't think Lance is a really bad driver. I don't think he's a he's not like a Mahavir Rangulathan or Gamaya Samaya or someone like that. You know, he's he's still a good driver. Um, he's not like absolutely terrible. But it will be interesting to see what he does for the rest of the season and hopefully he can pick it up. It's very much dependent on he has to bring results. And I think this year is the perfect opportunity for him to redeem his reputation. And if he beats Checo in the driver standings, gets on the podium, I think people need to actually view him for the driver he is and not the stereotype that they associate him with. If you're a bad driver, even in a good car, doesn't mean you're going to get points. It doesn't mean you're going to get podiums. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think that's it for the Hungarian race review. Thank you, Kira, for coming on this week. We will, like I said, link everything below. Um, make sure you give her a sub and follow her on Twitter and Instagram. Um, so, yeah, I'll round it off here. So, thanks again. Um, thanks, Hannah. And, yeah, give us a like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.